Today's video is primarily aimed at newer players because this question comes up quite frequently. In fact, it came up in my last beginner video. So I figured I'm gonna answer this once and for all extensively here. The question is, why is meditation cloak bad? Or rather, why is it considered bad? Now, something that I want to say right at the beginning here, meditation cloak is not always bad. There are situations where it can be useful. We'll get to those at the end, so I haven't forgotten about that aspect. But first, let's talk about what often makes meditation a bad choice. Just to be clear, I use meditation and meditation cloak interchangeably. It used to be called meditation once upon a time. New players are introduced to meditation right at the start of the game when they go through the tutorials and it's kind of recommended for them to build this item, which leads many to believe that it should be a good beginner item as well. And part of the problem is the playstyle that meditation creates. New players tend to use meditation as a crutch to offset their misplays, which basically teaches you a very impractical playstyle. It gives you a very poor understanding of when you should play aggressively or defensively and how much health you really have to work with in lane. This is especially true for squishier characters that generally don't have that much health, where meditation can make a significant difference at earlier stages of the game. And as an extension of that, meditation also teaches you a very poor usage of health potions, because many players that use meditation will not use health or mana potions that you could use instead. For just a little bit of gold you wouldn't have to sacrifice a whole relic slot and you would still get sustain. That works a little differently because you have to pre-plan more with potions as you generally want to use them before you drop to low because you aren't supplied with an instant heal or instant restore of your mana. Effective potion usage is something that is relatively important at later stages of the game when you improved a little bit more. Likewise, it obviously teaches you poor handling of your mana. If you consistently use more abilities than you can actually afford to, then you will end up spending too much mana and you kind of can offset that with meditation once again, but it's not the playstyle that should be preferred in most situations. So if all of this is the case, why not just use meditation and have all these benefits? Well, the main problem is that meditation uses up a relic slot. And especially characters that aren't particularly tanky, that aren't particularly high in health, will often heavily rely on other relics first and can't really afford losing one of those slots. The two items that you will mainly see on more experienced levels of play are on one hand Purification Beads and on the other hand Aegis Amulet. Purification Beads is the only way for many characters to get out of any sort of crowd control, so for example stuns or other lockdowns. There are other options in some situations but often Purification Beads is the only one you can really go for. And Aegis Amulet is often the only option to avoid high amounts of sudden burst damage. Even characters like junglers that don't rely as much on these items in all situations will need other relics instead like Blink Rune. And they also should be able to sustain decently from jungle camps if they play their hands right. In solo lane you should also be able to sustain through other means and you will often need teleport in order to get back to lane and not lose any farm. So pretty much in any situation you will end up with relics that are more effective for your role and more important quite often. And that brings us to another issue that comes with meditation specifically. Meditation is considered a heal and healing in smite can be countered. Anti-heal is actually very accessible and often very cheap with very minor downsides to it meaning that meditation will often get weakened by it a lot at relatively insignificant cost for the enemy building the anti-heal item. Now of course you can wait out the anti-heal effect, but especially during teamfights you won't always have that option and not all of your teammates will always have that option, significantly weakening the impact of meditation. This gets even worse if the character you're playing has a built-in heal, because in that case Somebody can counter your character as well as your relic just by building anti-heal, so you're kind of giving them opportunity to counter you even more that way. But what if you want to build a defense item that helps your team? Well, that is what Magic Shell is primarily for. If you compare them side by side, you will notice that at any point of the game, Magic Shell will give you 25 more protections than Meditation would heal. 
Yes, the shield is temporary, but if you time your shields right, that won't be an issue. In any combat situation, you can use the shield to prevent enemies from attacking you and avoiding further damage that way, or from them having to work through the shield first. There is a minor downside to Shell, and that is that it has 20 seconds more cooldown. I am aware of that, so this is not something that went past me, but in most situations, the potential of Shell will still outweigh that of Meditation, especially since Magic Shell has a very strong upgrade as well. Magic Shell allows you and all your allies affected by the Shell to block the next two incoming basic attacks, which can be massive in a late game teamfight. Meditation's passive is interesting, but usually not that useful for you. And by the way, as we're already on the topic of meditation and healing and relics here, another relic that has similar issues in many ways is also Bracer of Undoing, even though here the issues can sometimes be even worse and the item also comes with other benefits along with that. So generally speaking, the sooner you rid yourself of meditation as a staple in every build, the earlier you'll be able to significantly improve your game experience and knowledge and awareness just by understanding how the game as a whole works better and what you can actually afford to do in most situations. And you will also learn to use purification beats earlier and actually counter any crowd control on you, which is something that takes a while in itself. So that is definitely a useful thing to get on as early as possible. But like I said, there are also outliers. I don't think that meditation is always inherently bad and there are situations where it can be useful. The first one is specifically Changa in solo lane. Now, like I said, typically you want to build Teleport in solo lane, and Teleport in itself is not exactly a useful relic in late game either way, but it is somewhat necessary there because you want to buy items and then go back to lane very quickly and not lose XP. Changa has the benefit of her passive, which allows her to send her bunny to base and buy items for her instead. Because of this passive, she technically never has to go to base as long as she has enough health and mana. Additionally, her second ability is kind of a mix between a Purification Beats and an Aegis already, so she is not as reliant on these relics as other gods, and in solo lane it's not even as necessary anyways. Based on that, fitting meditation into your build can help you get through the early game a lot easier without having to leave lane with this specific character. It still comes with the issue of her own healing being countered as well as her relic being countered, but as you can kind of still use it in late game and you will probably have situations where you can back out of a fight to use it sometimes, it still seems to be more useful for her than teleport specifically. But that's only because of her passive, it doesn't really apply to other characters the same way. Similar things can be attempted with other characters, but are typically not as effective. Another outlier is the game mode Assault, in which you can heal your entire team with this, and as you can't go back to base unless you die in Assault, this can actually be very beneficial, specifically in that game mode. There are also situations where you just feel like you want to go super defensive against the enemy team, and even though they may build enter heal, you just need as much survivability as possible for your team. In those situations, you might want to build both Shell and Meditation as a support specifically, or as a tank specifically. These are incredibly rare and often it's more useful to just build Frenzy instead and give your team some more damage output because offense can be the best defense, but they exist, so I wanted to mention them briefly. And last but not least, you can technically also make plays with Meditation's upgraded passive. The mana cost reduction for abilities as well as the 1 second cooldown reduction can in very very specific situations be useful, for example if you have a Habois on your team who already has relatively short cooldowns, so there are those very niche outliers where there's a bit more benefit. The situations that I described here are rare and outliers and I'm sure there are some more, but I wanted to acknowledge that they exist, so it's not always inherently terrible to build Meditation Cloak in every situation. I hope this gave you a good overview of the issues with this item as well as the benefits. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, feel free to hit the sub button and maybe the bell so you'll be updated for more Smite content. And other than that, see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth. Out.